Hey, I'm Abby, CEO of Best Shot. Welcome to our micro video series, Fertility 15. In this series, we spend 15 minutes with some of our favorite fertility doctors chatting about topics surrounding patient care. We know patients love learning about their docs, and we know docs garner inspiration from one another. We hope you enjoy. So welcome to Fertility 15. This is a Best Shot video series. I'm your host, Abby Mercado, and I am also Best Shot CEO and a former fertility patient myself. Um, so in this series, we've spent 15 minutes talking to some of our favorite fertility doctors, chatting about topics surrounding patient care. Um, so I am here welcoming Dr. Amy Avazade, one of my absolute favorite doctors in this industry. Um, and she will be our inaugural guest um, on this series. So welcome, Dr. Amy. Thanks so uh, much for joining us today. Abby, of course. It's my pleasure. I love talking to you anytime. Amazing. Um, well, so let's start out. So tell us about yourself. Well, I'm a baby maker. I went to school a really long time to figure out an egg and sperm makes a baby. And that's what my sister teases me about all the time. She's like, dude, you went to school for 17 years to figure this out. <laughs> and I'm like, it's a little bit more complicated than that. But yeah, I'm basically a, a fertility doctor that helps people who are figuring out how to, you know, about their fertility options, who are trying to conceive, having some problems, who are pregnant and having issues, like people who have miscarriages. So I take care of people with all those different kinds of problems. Wow. I'm just, I'm still stuck on the 17 years. Can you yes. just quickly like walk us through like the, the breakdown in education that a fertility doctor has? So you went to college for four years. That's where I stopped. Absolutely. Then <laughs> medical school for another four and then OBGYN school for another four and then baby making school another three. So that's why okay. it feels like forever. So I graduated mm -hmm. high school at 17 and I started my practice at 32 and I'm 44 now, been in practice for over 12 years. I don't know how you do it. So yeah. baby making school, that's fellowship? That's the Reproductive Endocrinology and okay. Infertility Fellowship. Lots of three letter, four letter acronyms. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for great. I've, I've, yeah, it's always amazing to me how yeah. many years of school. It's the same right. as a neurosurgeon, right? Yeah. I mean, it is. Think about about it. Yeah, neurosurgeon, yeah. Um, yeah. lots of different specialties make people go right. through all that stuff. But I mean, what they do to me seems like rocket science. What I do, I feel <laughs> like there could be some flexibility in the number of years we go to school, but I'm just lucky to be doing what I'm doing. Awesome. Well, cool. Yeah. Um, so tell us, why do people call you the Egg Whisperer? How did that come about? Yeah, I mean, it's a really cute story. I never called myself the Egg Whisperer. It was a patient who was ready to give up and I helped her have her twins. It was her last cycle and she couldn't believe it. And as a gift, after she had her babies, she bought the URL eggwhisper.com and she gave it to me. And the rest is kind of history because I started throwing egg freezing parties and at one of my parties, a reporter was there and she was actually at that party too. She just came to support me. It was my first egg freezing party and it was right next to her work. And she whispered in the ear of the reporter, that's my egg whisperer. And then all of a sudden it was egg whisperer throwing egg freezing parties and the name kind of stuck. Yeah. And I use the name eggwhisper.com to educate women about their fertility levels. So it's basically a website now that people can go to, to get their levels checked and to learn more about their fertility. I love that. It's, I feel like there's so much misinformation in this industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a former fertility patient myself, like, I mean, there's no more stressful thing that you can go through. Nothing um, more and, stressful. Nothing. And, then, and then to just, you know, go see Dr. Google. It's just so wonderful to know that there's good right. resources out there. So, right. yeah. Well, awesome. Um, so tell me, what made you want to become a reproductive endocrinologist? How did you choose that path? Yeah, I mean, I, I tell people it's in my blood. I mean, people ask these really thoughtful questions before they choose a fertility doctor. And one thing people ask me is, how long have you been doing this for? And I'm like, does since birth count? <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, I came out basically from my mother's womb, knowing I wanted to be an OBGYN because it's in my genes. Both my dad and my grandpa were OBGYNs. My dad just recently retired, and he has delivered so many of my patients that I am now taking oh care of. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I didn't know insane. that. Oh, yeah. That's no, amazing. He has, my grandfather has delivered a baby that my dad then delivered her baby and then I did IVF for her. Stop. Wait. Mom, yeah. I like, I need like a whiteboard for that. Yeah, That's yeah. amazing. No, no, no it's I, insane. I and that. it gives you chills because we're talking yeah. about different countries. We're talking about a different country and then now here in this country. And that's how wild it is that yeah. how small the world truly is. Yeah. 
So, and then, you know, my mom unfortunately suffered several miscarriages, countless at the most devastating time a woman can go through miscarriages, which is in the uh, late second trimester. Oh God. And um, I was in middle school and I just knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to help women who were having miscarriages and reproductive endocrinologists, that's what we do. And so that's what I started doing my research in, in high school, in medical school. Mm -hmm. I would fly out to Boston and work under the head of the recurrent pregnancy loss department at Brigham and Women's Hospital at Harvard Medical School. And that's just what's my passion and continues to still be my passion because, you know, as you probably know, um, from hearing stories from other women, we, don't, we just don't do a good enough job taking care of women who have uh, pregnancies that miscarry. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I had a miscarriage um, early on in, I've had two pregnancies and one mm -hmm. instant miscarriage and mm -hmm. um, the second ended in twins next to Nanny. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, absolutely. And I think it was, the statistic is one in four pregnancies end in miscarriage. Like it's we, very common. Yeah. It's so it's common. We need to normalize mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for being on our team. Dr. Absolutely. Um, so obviously we are in a new world with COVID-19. Um, and I am just curious, how are you connecting with your patients right now? Um, with a lot of care kind of moving to virtual, um, telemedicine, et cetera. Can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important for patients not to feel lost during this whole COVID pandemic as far as their care to, um, you need more contact with people to communicate the same thing. I find that when I wear a mask and I tell a patient something, it's not heard as easily as if I didn't have the mask on. I'll give you an example. I drew a patient's blood. I draw my own patient's blood in my office. And I said to her, your AMH level will come back on Friday. Once it comes back, I'll follow up with you. I'll let you know the level and I'll give you the plan. Then she goes home and says, um, what's the plan? So <laughs> I'm like, well, I told you that I'll let you know on Friday. She's like, well, I heard something about Friday, but I wasn't sure what it was. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, I need to do a better job. So what I do is I verbalize instructions. I email them and I write them down and give them to the patient because I feel like everyone is so stressed right now and it's hard to like be in that moment, especially when someone's stabbing you with a needle. <laughs> to be yeah, like, what yeah, did right, you you're like, oh, that hurts. Exactly. Okay. I forgot, I don't know what you're saying to me. <laughs> exactly, so I'm like, wow, if I think I do a good job communicating mm -hmm. and she's still asking me, what's the plan? I'm not doing a good enough job. Yeah. So I feel like if I'm not doing a good jo enough job, think about everyone in Everybody other else. clinics right. because obviously this is going to be an issue everywhere else. Yeah. So that's why I always, I, I want patients to know, ask for your notes. So from every visit, mm -hmm. one way, if you don't have a clinic that's as prompt in replying, ask for that day's clinic note. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even yeah. before you leave, just say, can I have a copy of today's note by the end of the day? Then yeah. you know what the plan is. So there's no like guessing game. You know what was drawn, yeah. you know what labs were ordered, then you'll mm -hmm. know when they'll be back in and then yes. you can follow up with the plan. And then I always tell my patients when your period starts, think of me, it's the easiest thing. Yeah, right? think of me. Because <laughs> obviously that. my work is not done. So period, yeah. me, I have a bumper sticker on my car. It says, follow me. Um, Cause then people, <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but you know, you no, know. It, you it doesn't relate. sound weird at all. Relate. We've right. been playing, we've been playing with the term. So as obviously we're a patient engagement platform for fertility patients, and we've been playing with the term um, just in time um, communication. Right. Like, you know, we see so many clinics out there who are handing like big binders right. of information to their patients right. and like that does right. not is right. not internalized so i no. love how you're speaking of this that makes sense yeah so. yeah i mean i actually schedule emails out i'll be like yeah. um did you stop your birth control pill today i'll schedule it out like i'll look at their yeah. calendar so because yeah. the last thing i want is people to be like well i forgot and now their whole cycle is messed up and just that little thing can make the biggest difference totally. you know totally. yeah, yeah. <laughs> think of me when you're i'll think of you next time yeah. my period starts yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um well so one of the many reasons I love you is because you are super into innovation and just always following trends and reading um, journals and articles and whatnot. What is the innovation that you are most excited about um, in fertility right now as it relates to the science, as it relates to getting more people who are struggling with infertility pregnant at scale? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things I've been excited for a really long time is non-invasive testing on embryos and even non-invasive testing on the uterine lining to look at the implantation window. 
So anytime you use the word biopsy and embryo, I mean, I, I feel like there are situations not, you know, I, women in the Bay Area are super lucky and fortunate to have some of the top embryologists in the world here, but not everyone is as fortunate to have the same technology that we do. Yeah. So if non-invasive PGT could be available in everywhere, I mean, that's one thing that really gets me fired up. And I feel like it's something that I've been waiting for and waiting for and waiting for. And there are people that are actually doing it and doing it really well. It's not something that's being done universally, mm -hmm. but I hope we'll learn more about it to see if it's something that certainly can be done universally. And the other thing is the, embryo, the endometrial biopsy. I mean, that thing hurts. Yeah. Like, to, you know, I talk about IVF in a three-step process, right? Step one, embryo creation. Step two, embryo transfer preparation. And that includes the implantation testing. But in order to do implantation testing, you actually right. have to do a biopsy of the lining. And like, that sucks. So I give all my patients yeah. Valium and a Tylenol with coding, but not everyone does that. So if somehow we could do that non-invasively, that'd be pretty cool too. And I know it's coming. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. It is. Like, I, I, I'm just going back to an embryo biopsy. So right. like, it's just so tiny. <laughs> Like, right. It's microscopic. Right? right. Like there are so many risks associated with doing an actual biopsy. And I to mean, find a better, more efficient way to do that mm -hmm. is so important for this industry and right. patients. I agree. I couldn't yeah. agree more. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. Thanks for that. I think yeah. we're all gonna go read all about yes. non invasive non PGT. PGT. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um so let's see, what was the other thing? So so I'm curious. A lot of um, a lot of women are very nervous to kind of take that next step mm -hmm. um, to start IVF, to even go see a doctor, to start IUI, what have you. What is one thing that you would tell a woman who is just about to start her fertility journey? Um, test, don't guess. That's it. Mm -hmm. Figure out your fertility diagnosis. That's the most important thing. And then ask yourself the questions. What do I want? What is it yeah. going to take to get what I want? And am I willing to do it? And you can only yeah. figure those things out if you know what your diagnosis is and don't accept yeah. the term unexplained. And that stuff drives me nuts. Like yeah. the 43 year old who's like, my doctor told me it was unexplained. I'm like, you just told me you're 43. Yeah. Like that's yeah. the explanation. <laughs> so unless, so that just implies that 43 isn't the diagnosis. And then how mm -hmm. can you make a fertility plan if you don't know what the diagnosis is? So I think that's the most important thing is do all the testing up front, figure out what's going on and then make a plan. Yeah. yeah interesting. So while we're talking about just testing and information gathering and um, you love acronyms, yes. can you tell us about some of your favorite like Dr. Amy acronyms? Oh, absolutely. Here we go. We got the tushy method. So those are the uh -huh. five steps to check your fertility. Okay. We have the balls method. So that's for guys. And so okay. each one has a URL. So tushymethod.com, ballsmethod.com. <laughs> so balls method is for guys to figure out if, you know, how to make their sperm great again, so yes. to speak. And then um, I also have the egg whisper diet. So that's not a recipe, but it's a recipe for IVF success. So D is diagnosis, IVF, and uh, embryo transfer preparation and transfer. And then I have a whole bunch of other ones. I have um, my, my newest ones are the angel approach. So that's the approach to recurrent pregnancy loss or miscarriage care. And I'll just break it down. The A is autoimmune anatomy, AMH, nutrition, genetics, endocrine abnormalities, and lifestyle. So those are the things that you should look at if you have had a miscarriage to make sure you're not missing anything. And then my other greatest ones are HOPE syndrome. So that's how I renamed PCOS. And HOPE syndrome is high androgens, lots of eggs on your ovaries, irregular periods, and eating and exercise habits that you should pay attention to. And then my latest and greatest is embryo uh -huh. diamonds. So embryo diamonds, so that's how you have to think about your embryos. And if you remember the word diamonds, because it's so, patients are, they come in from all over the country and world, just not knowing these simple things that they should know about their embryos. So it's day they were frozen, implantation rate per embryo, are they abnormal? Are they mosaic? Do you have the official reports? Are they normal? Will they help you reach your dreams? And how is the sperm count on the day of the retrieval? Ooh. What's up? 
That's it. I mean, it's like you've heard I of yellow diamonds, it. you've heard of white diamonds, and now we have embryo diamonds. And I talk so to much patients. sense. Well, and that's the thing. And diamonds get scores and they get reports. Yeah. Your embryos yeah. do too. And so you yeah. just paid a whole bunch of money yeah. for these embryo diamonds and right. all the work that went into creating them. You need yeah. to learn about them too, just like you yeah. would a diamond before you bought one. Totally. I don't totally. buy diamonds. I just buy fake crystals. Um, so. <laughs> well, you're like, it's like the four C's. No, embryo diamonds. Exactly. That's right. The, <laughs> eight, the eight things. Yeah. The eight things. The eight I love things. it. That's awesome. Does that one have a URL yet? Um, not yet. I need to oh, get yeah. URLs for it. Hope, Angel, and Diamond, Embryo Diamonds, but they're coming soon. They're all in my head, but they're coming out soon. They, I actually own I mean, you're URLs. not busy at all. No, I mean, I own, embryo diamonds. I own EmbryoDiamonds.com, HopeApproach.com. I own all those URLs, just a matter of getting them up and <laughs> running. It'll be soon, maybe tonight, so people can maybe go to them and listen to this. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so my last question um, is, if you could debunk one fertility myth forever which one would it be and i'm gonna i'm because this is a common one that doctors like to speak to i'm going to not let you speak to age as the primary determinant of infertility yeah i mean i think the the easiest one is um after you get pregnant with baby number one your next baby is going to be easier yeah. And that one breaks my heart because well-intentioned people like OBGYNs share that with their patients and then patients really believe it. And then they delay the time to get treatment until sometimes it's too late. Like sometimes yeah. they'll wait two or three years because they felt like, well, I was told since I got IVF with the first baby, the next one I wouldn't need IVF for. Yeah. And that that's really upsetting to me. So that plays into my egg whisper golden rule, number 329. What? <laughs> or I should make it number two. At your postpartum check, get your levels checked or get your tissue yeah. checked. Oh, interesting. Yeah, oh, that's, that's... that literally is one of my golden rules. So at your oh, I mean, that, like, check, that's so get your obvious. AMH checked, especially if you're someone who didn't have a problem getting pregnant with baby yeah. number one. And that's yeah. the thing. You can be under this assumption that everything's going to be great for baby number two because you just looked at your husband and got pregnant. So of course the same thing's going to happen again three years later. But the reality is... It's harder three years later. We yeah. don't age backwards. We no, just don't. don't. No. J-Lo does. <laughs> she does. Halle Berry ages backwards. Yeah. But my yeah. ovaries don't age backwards. Don't. Your ovaries yeah. don't age backwards. No, what's inside does not no. age backwards. I know. Yeah. I know I wasn't allowed to talk about age, but I had to throw it in there somehow. You, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Fair. Forgiven. <laughs> I forgive you. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's all the questions that I have for you today, mm -hmm. Dr. Amy. Thanks, we, I am so appreciative um, of you um, mm -hmm. just for being an amazing doctor, yeah. for serving your patients, and also yeah. for popping on this program with us. Well, you have to send me some EDM tracks so I can listen. Yes, yes, That's I a, will. You have to. I will. I okay. will. So, okay. so Dr. Amy, just for the listeners, Dr. Amy loves EDM um, and Thrashbot Music yeah. is my husband. Sean, also co-founder of Best Shot. Um, mm -hmm. And so anyway, I'll, I'll post it somewhere for everybody to see. Love it. So, love it, love it. Um, well, thank you all for joining Fertility 15. This was 15 Minutes with Dr. Amy Abazadeh. Um, and we'll see you next time. Awesome. Thanks, Abby. Thanks again. Thanks again, Bye. Thanks again for all you do.